Hello, welcome to Zscaler Pulse, a monthly podcast brought to you by the Zenith community team that is aimed at empowering our audience to better understand Zscaler products, the Zenith community, and the zero trust industry. We'll go over some updates around the Zenith community, discuss advancements with Zscaler products, and highlight some key industry trends and news each month. Hi, I'm Ben Garrison, technical moderator and knowledge manager for the Zenith community here at Zscaler, and I'm joined by an amazing group of people from our business analytics team, as well as our Zscaler Academy team on this episode. This this episode was recorded over the holidays, so there's quite a big gap between our recordings, um, but we want to get this out for you. So um, hope you all enjoy. Thank you. All right. So to kick off the product pulse segment, we have Dan Gould, a director of product marketing, and he is joined by Aditya Jayan or Jayan. I get terrible Jayan, at names. Yeah. Jan, <laughs> senior product manager, and and today we want to open up the discussion surrounding Zscaler's business analytics portfolio and some really cool and amazing offerings and enhancements there. Um, so yeah, super happy to have you two on the show. Hi guys, thanks for coming on. How's how's everything going for you? A pleasure, Ben. Pretty thanks. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you've been uh, pretty busy with webinars and uh, shows and all the stuff with uh, business analytics. So I appreciate you taking the time to to come on and talk to us about this. And <clears throat> I'm familiar with like ZDX because last show we've had ZDX here on the podcast and we might have them, might be leaking a little bit. We might have them on again, right? Because there's some some other cool things that might be happening. I can't tell too much, um, but <laughs> we might have them on again. So what's the difference between ZDX and business analytics? Isn't that the same thing? So you know, I'll kick off here, and uh, DJ, you know, feel free to chime in. And so, so Ben, just last week, it's amazing mm -hmm. we brought up ZDX. How did you know? Just last week, we actually rounded out our business analytics portfolio. And to date, really, when we, we thought of business analytics, mm -hmm. it largely is part and parcel with ZDX. But over the past probably five months, we've really rounded out the portfolio. There are three key pillars now. Of course, it's ZDX, which we all know, we all love. It sort of keeps in place fully pro productive, focused, and you know, uh, make sure that digital experience issues aren't, 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 aren't a problem. But over the summer, we actually unveiled Risk 360, so organizations can better sort of, uh, I guess, you know, manage, quantify, and, and mitigate their, their cybersecurity risk. And then just last week, we actually released the third pillar of our business analytic portfolio, which is business insights to help with SaaS and Office utilization, which we'll talk a lot more about. So when you think about sort of that, the, you know, that ZDX piece, well, it turns out now ZDX forms part of a really well-rounded business analytics portfolio. Look at that hard. I don't know where this came from, but I, I, <laughs> I think you did. Wait, let's test it. I think you did the heart motion. Does that actually do a thing? I turned I, it off in my <laughs> Mac OS. But <laughs> I turned it off in my Mac up. OS. And I, evidently it's, oh, you know, okay. Look, if so you're much love in this room. <laughs> if oh, you're man. listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, you shoot over to uh, YouTube and watch this segment. It's hilarious. Anyway, moving on. I mean, honestly, the, you, I mean, this, so much you know, love. The, the operating system can't deny how good ZDX is. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, yeah. So really, so last week we we uh, rounded out the business analytics portfolio. We unveiled a net new product and business insights, and then we, you know, even though risk. 360's only been on the market for four or five months. We actually already brought a major new product update, which is exciting given how much momentum. We like to joke, Ben, hopefully you catch the irony that Risk 360 is flying off the shelves. <laughs> well, we're going to give you some points for cringe, but yes, uh, <laughs> the, the, the corny it's line goes to Dan. <laughs> so, okay, all right, that, that helps me understand, right? Because we got like Zscaler for users and Zscaler for IoT, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so this is more of a, a solutions portfolio or kind of like a package of different products that kind of roll up into what is business analytics, which is those three pillars that you had mentioned previously. So thank you for giving me clarity because I know that there are probably other people who are like, wait a minute, what is this? Another offering? Another product? I don't want to buy. I want to buy that, which I think from a product perspective, that makes sense. I just want to buy business analytics. And you're like, okay, well, that's three products, right? So, but let's talk about why someone might want all three products or why they might only need one or two of those particular solutions, right? Whether it be ZDX or, or business analytics. Um, Cause I know, you know, we want to talk about some of the challenges that are revolving around organizations that might need to have these products. So maybe we can dive into a little bit about that. 
Yeah, I mean, I think I can I can probably like tackle some of these aspects. I think I think um, you know, look, I, I think in in the current environment that we exist in today, right? Post COVID, post all of these different digital transformations that the customers are continuing on, uh, what they're really looking for is data to help back whatever strategy that they're trying to enact in their business. Now, the one thing that's really powerful about Zscaler is we have the data to help inform multi multiple different dimensions of that strategy. Is it making sure that your risk posture is stronger, that you have less you know, propensity to have a data leak, to have something like a colonial pipeline data leak occur for you and your business and have that kind of financial exposure and risk? If you want to try and understand, you know, how do we improve the experience for our end users with regards to their mission critical SaaS applications so that they're not, you know, trying to close a deal and all of a sudden have a, you know, a static uh, experience and suddenly have freeze framing at an inopportune time while trying to have a, a strong closing, uh, you know, cl closing argument as to why that customer should continue on and, 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 and purchase their product. Or is it about helping you understand, you know, what do I all use in my portfolio in terms of applications or technology? And ultimately, am I utilizing those applications or, 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 or products to the best of their ability? Um, Zscaler is uniquely positioned to provide analytics on all of these dimensions. And that is really what we've done these past several months in rounding out the portfolio and what ZDX helped establish as a, as a portfolio in and of itself, right? It was the first solution in that space. You know, Zscaler is a security product. Every time you say the name Zscaler, people are like, oh, it's about securing my technology. It's about securing my uh, applications and my users. But that same subset of data is useful for all of these other use cases. And that's really what we've come to realize over the last several months with both Risk360 and Business Analytics, or sorry, Business Insights, is to say, you know, we have all of this data. Let's make it po you know, possible for our users to use that to run their, their business more efficiently or with a higher level of productivity uh, or with less risk. So a little bit more on my business insights, like since that's the area that I'm, I'm leading, um, you know, I think one thing that I've noticed and I'm, 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 I'm very aware of this, this challenge is that with the advent of COVID and, you know, when people started working remotely and worked from anywhere, SaaS applications were critical to being able to achieve the outcomes during that time period, right? You needed to have best of breed solutions to be able to enable that collaboration and the seamlessness of experience. You, you had new new providers start showing up in that market that really took off. Like you look at the Miros of the world, um, which I think their real name before they became Miro was something really interesting. It was like Project Real-Time Board or something like that. But Miro took off uh, really because people needed a way of collaboratively, you know, collaborating seamlessly virtually. And other providers in that space also did, but that became hyper-specialized, right? But those types of technologies became hyper specialized for that use case and you had proliferation of those. And so now you're looking at it now today and you got six different providers in the market that are rolling for the same use case. So how do you make use of those efficiently and effectively so that at the end of the day, you know, you're not overextending your dollars. And it's not just on the SaaS side, but it's also on the business side, right? So you have often is that, you know, you may have well utilized or poorly utilized. You know, we have a lot of businesses that are coming to us and customers that are coming to us and saying, I need to have this data so that I can help justify keeping this office open or do I shut it down? Actually, I'm literally doing that exercise right now with several of our customers that are negotiating what their lease should be for six months from now. So, you know, having this, this data allows for it to be a, a strategic decision, not just you know, throw things at a wall and figure out what happened after the fact, which I think a lot of businesses were trying to figure out how to do, we're doing, you know, I feel like we're using this app. So let's resign for another year. I feel like we need this office. Let's resign this lease for another year. So Zscaler is uniquely positioned to give the data that's necessary for them to make the best decision for them at that moment. I think one of the things that I, because so like you mentioned, like at the you know beginning of COVID, right, and all that stuff, where we had this, this huge offering of SaaS that trickled in, and we got some parity finally after months and years of of that, right, where you know developers and companies kind of fast tracked a lot of their efforts. But because I remember, you know, day one, I was like, we had to open up VPN tunnels like crazy, right? Yeah, we were getting <laughs> we, we were getting everybody <laughs> trying to connect, and like they couldn't because. Uh, we had no seats, right? But one of the biggest things from a SaaS from a, from a SaaS position was, you know, licensing, 
right? Like we would have to, we had, you know, you had attrition, you had churn right within your employee groups. And so how do you true up and manage those licenses? And that was kind of a big thing for, for me um, to know, Hey, do I need more licenses or can I just free up some licenses? And that would yep. take, that would take a long time sometimes if you have, you know, hundreds and or mm-hmm. a, dare say thousands of licenses. So um, I can definitely understand having a tool to help with that. Yeah. <laughs> or at least being able to give us some insights with it. Yeah, absolutely. If you think about some of these big, big providers, right, that are, are mission critical for an applic- uh, for, for your, your install base for a, cust- mm-hmm. for a company, you got your ERP systems, you got your uh, HR systems that are mission critical, you have specific collaboration tools. What you don't have at your fingertips is who's using it, who's not using it, and then using that data more efficiently to go and like avoid buying more licenses when you actually have a license that you could free up, like you said. Those are the types of things that we want to serve on a platter to our customers to make sure that they run their business more efficiently. And again, Zscaler is uniquely positioned to do that because of the fact that we are already installed in line and have that visibility. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, I mean, from Risk 360, I know just a little bit about Risk 360. And I know a little bit more about ZDX because we've had them on the show. Um, from a Risk 360 or from a Business Insights, kind of what's the I guess the the trifecta here. How would a how would a customer prob- you know possibly leverage all three, right? To paint a picture or who are the people within those organizations? I understand like an IT admin would probably really enjoy ZDX, right? To be mm-hmm. able to get the issue isolation a lot faster. Um, but you know, who else in the organization? Is it the CISO? Is it the IT manager? Is it the risk, you know, risk committee or risk manager? Uh, who's who's using these app, uh, applications the most or these these products the most, just to say? Yeah, I mean, I can I could probably tackle it from the from the business insights perspective. Um, you know, you're, you're, it's it, it's really interesting. There's a lot of opportunity for us to engage with, you know, personas that we wouldn't necessarily be engaged with because of the nature mm-hmm. of the product. But I would say, like, if you're talking about the app side, it's a lot of folks in procurement who are really critical in discerning, like, do we actually need to buy more licensing or get more licensing, new provider, et cetera. You got folks in IT, obviously, that are centrally managing and administrating these tools. You got folks in finance that are also interested in, like, obviously streamlining the OpEx and making sure that it's working correctly. And then you have this new function that we're interacting with a lot more frequently re- re- uh, recently is, is data, right? So VP is a data, a CDOs, a chief data officer, CDIOs, chief data and information officers that are really interested in, like, housing all this data in a central repository and then using that to then serve the business. Um, and then on the workplaces side, you're talking about, you know, facility managers, people and culture, HR, um, you know, real estate, all of these different functions really are interested in that utilization and understanding how to make better decisions. Um, and, and funny enough, there might be some overlap about this with, with those functions as well in other products, right? Whether it's ZDX or 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 risk three sixty, but but yeah, Dan, maybe you can chime in on the risk three sixty side. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got this portfolio. As Tisha said, there's a lot of emerging challenges that organizations need sort of just insights and data for, uh, and so we can solve a lot of these emerging challenges for different teams in in an organization. Uh, it might be again the real estate team who's really wondering: Do we need to open up an office in Denver? Or do we need to downsize, you know, in Dallas? And so they finally have the insights with respect to risk three sixty. Um, obviously can help uh, a, a lot of people on the security side of the house. It's for starters, the people you would guess, security leaders, CISO, CISO minus one, so to speak, people who tend to be on the hook for really understanding overarching cyber risk. Uh, and what's more oftentimes in larger organizations, there is also somebody else who heads up the su- security compliance or security risk role. And those folks also tend to really gravitate towards a product like Risk 360. To date, these people have actually had a pretty, you know, uh, not, you know, unpleasant status quo and that frequently they would just like pull the like, you know, vulnerability scanner data and try to make sense of it and maybe roll in some phishing logs and they build a report from that uh, and try to uh, almost even normalize it to come, come up with some report, Ben, that would make sense for like a board of directors who like non-technical stakeholders. Really, really challenging. So we really can help solve A, give them a complete picture of their cyber risk across four stages of an attack. But just as importantly, help them report on that cyber risk, both in terms of presenting to their board, 
or even really helping them understand how their current security controls map to key frameworks they, they consider, MITRE ATT&CK, uh, NIST CSF, things like that. So we can really help the security side of the house and security compliance, security risk, both better manage risk and then report on that, which is the other sort of half of the battle for them. What about measuring uh, mitigating steps, right? So you have a risk, right? You have someone who has identified a risk. They go to risk committee or meeting or whatever it is, and the business says, you know what, that actually, that's a risk that we should mitigate, and they, they invest money in whatever mitigating measures to put into place for said risk. Um, are we able to then gauge and measure how effective those mitigation steps are doing? After they've been implemented with the with the Zscaler uh, products and services, yeah. So the good news is, and, many, and the, these tend to be Zscaler customers, right? And they've got that Zscaler in place. So again, they just turn this on, and they can really get a clear picture uh, of their their current cyber risk. And you know, Ben, you've heard this before: the four stages of an attack, uh, and that's really that that it, it's critical. We've studied this with threat labs. We know that many you know attacks they boil down to those four stages, and so we give them a picture of sort of their exposed external attack surface. You know, servers exposed to the interwebs, things that are not behind ZPA, um, you know, that sort of thing. So they can understand sort of the outside in view. And then also really look at the other three stages that we can help them with. Risk of compromise, risk of lateral movement, and risk of data loss. And so that being the case, uh, Zscaler tends to be a critical, if not the most critical security provider they have in place. So they can instantly understand where there are gaps. Maybe they need additional controls. Maybe there are some misconfigurations that, you know, probably inadvertent that they can sort of harden to get to a sort of a stronger security posture. So they absolutely can see where the gaps are and where the next steps are uh, in, in sort of their cyber risk journey. I kind of am a little spoiled because I get to see, this is really awesome because this is something that I even struggled with when I came working for Zscaler originally was, okay, well, we've got all these products, right? And we got you know the concept of platform, right? Obviously, the Zscaler platform as a whole makes is is very powerful. But you have these different these different pillars of offerings, and so how do they all connect? How do they all communicate? And how do you leverage the different products and the different tools at the right time to achieve to achieve the goal? And and doing the podcast and and getting getting more involved with this, I'm I'm starting to be able to connect a lot of really cool dots to how organizations. Um, can utilize this, right? And and utilize their products and services. You know, we haven't even talked about, you know, like deception, right? Which is another key aspect to this, where if you're really worried about it, you can you can set up some traps out there to, to collect data and you can make de informed decisions off of that within your uh, within your organization. So this is actually really awesome, cool stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed myself. Yeah. And one thing, one thing to note as well is like, Look, the, that's, a, that's a great example of like the interplay between the products of the Zscaler platform. So like, imagine you deploy deception. That actually changes your risk posture, your, your risk score, mm -hmm. based off of the fact that we've actually deployed deception. And how much does that actually uh, you know, change your risk across those four stages of attack, right? And so that's the interplay and the benefit of the Zscaler platform is like all of these products are talking to each other. They're, 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 they're designed with this intent to speak to each other and then purpose build data and dashboards and visualizations that are really useful for the end user when it comes to solving that need for what the product exists to do. Yeah, and, and I know that we wanted to talk a little bit about what was new with Risk 360. Mm -hmm. And I know specifically we wanted to talk about uh, some possible some financial modeling or possibly yep. some, you know, SEC sample disclosures, that yep. kind of stuff. So maybe we can dive into that a little bit before we wrap up and uh, and get, get you guys out of here. Yeah. So I don't so, want to take up any more oh, your time. <laughs> ben, just to revisit my terrible joke, Risk 360 has been flying off the shelves. Um, you know, I almost said a terrible joke too when you said that the 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 steps of a breach, right? And when I was I was laughing because I was like, yeah, it's panic, run, drink coffee, repeat. <laughs> also true. Also true. Also hey, true. You know, on a serious note, in the past few months, given that cyber risk is a, an ever sort of more pressing initiative at 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 you know enterprises, uh, you know, board members get up or CFOs get up and see the same headlines we do about ransomware attacks or data breaches, et cetera, and then they turn around and I say this somewhat tongue in cheek, but like start frantically texting the CISO, right? That knee jerk. That what's knee -jerk our What's response, our posture? Yeah. Are we exposed? Like what's going on? And so that being the case, there's been you know a lot of interest, and also has really encouraged us to move really fast and bring your first major product update uh, to 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 the product. 
and a handful of things like you mentioned. So in the product from day one, we actually had financial modeling or financial exposure. So you can look at cyber through the lens of sort of the security risk factors themselves, or you could also look at it through the list of financial exposure. So we're able to really work with some of our, our quants, if you will, internally, and they, we gave them some really high quality data and they were able to build effectively an interface that maps cyber risk to financial exposure. So for instance, uh, you'd be able to understand if you do have a VPN in place and given you know the risk associated with that, it would you know expose you to X, Y, Z amount of, in, in dollars of, of cyber risk. And so that was a great start. What we've done now, and just last week, we actually introduced more sophisticated modeling to complement what we were already doing. Uh, it's actually probabilistic modeling. It's actually Monte Carlo simulations, uh, which I'm familiar with from sort of like the, my nest egg, my retirement account does that, right? Sort of runs like a thousand different simulations, good, bad, fair market conditions. Well, we do the same thing here and give sort of a range of outcomes. It's a really, really powerful, really sophisticated way to look at financial exposure of security risk. And this is something that I think uh, many of our customers have said, hey, if you bring that to the to, to the product, we can share that with like our risk nerds internally. It'll really, you know, uh, help us really uh, understand our, our cyber risk in a, in a new way. Something else that I think, you know, it's appropriate we're doing this around mid-December, Ben, is the SEC over the summer passed some new regulations uh, asking companies on their annual 10Ks to disclose more about how they're managing cybersecurity, how they're managing cybersecurity risk. And so actually the rules are into effect December 15th. And so henceforth and forevermore on a company's annual 10K, they have to talk uh, about how they're, they're, they're effectively doing cybersecurity. And the aim was to help investors understand just how seriously a company takes its, its cybersecurity uh, to, to help inform their investment decision. And so that being the case, we actually have included sample SEC disclosures in the product to help them along the way. Because there are a lot of questions about what, you know, what did we discuss? How much should we disclose? And we actually help them out of the box with a sort of uh, an easy disclosure that gets them 70% of the way there. They can then customize it. We've actually also rolled in a new cybersecurity maturity assessment. It's actually powered by some new AI LLMs that we've custom trained in-house. This gives a very detailed look at a company's current cyber posture and sort of their, their maturity on, on the zero trust journey. This is, I think, ideally, we like to think they can do away with a lot of the expensive consultants. Nothing against consultants, but in many cases, they'll need a matter of months and hundreds of thousands of dollars to pull together a very similar report. So this is available out of the box in a single click for all organizations using Risk 360. And that's actually just the beginning. There are new, new, uh, new risk factors. There's some additional support for you know, cyber insurance questionnaires. There's a ton going on in the product, and we're just getting started. So we're really excited about it. And not to mention, I mean, the, the cyber, cybersecurity risk assessment or maturity assessments, right? So I worked for an MSP for a little while, right? And we would do that as part of our yearly renewal and yearly, you know, a, a, a tempo with the customers that we would have a security assessment and we would do this kind of this postmortem of the last year, et cetera. So if you are working with a partner or with an MSP or a consultant, and they are also partnered with Zscaler, this is something that for our partners that out there, hey, this this cybersecurity maturity assessment is something that you should probably really be offering to your clients because it's going to make that that end of year or quarterly or whatever it is that you do a lot easier because they're already within the platform. So yeah, Indeed. awesome. Well, you know, thanks so much, guys. And I know we're recording this on December nineteenth, this particular session. So when the podcast comes out, we'll probably not be until sometime in January, but. Uh, so for Dan and Aditya, you know, happy holidays and thank you so much for coming on. And I know we're going to have a lot of fun times in the, in the next couple of weeks and getting some some will rest. So appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, thanks for having us. OK, now that we just got done meeting with Dan and uh, team, we are going to transition over to our Zscaler Academy team. Hey, so this is in the future or the past i don't know so that recording if you're listening was on december 19th and now it is january 18th all part of the grand scheme so uh welcome back from uh, the holiday break i'm sure that everyone got a nice breather and got to enjoy some some delicious food and 
Um, but welcome back. Nice to see you both. And uh, the Z Scaler Academy team is here to talk about some awesome new promotions and even some promotion extensions, as well as some changes, as well as some um, new offerings with some of our certifications and our and our training on the Z Scaler Academy. So, hi, Katie. Hi, Comedy. How we doing? Doing good, Ben. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. Doing fantastic. Doing fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's a new year. We are into the new year fast and furious. It, you know what? The, the 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 break from from 2023 to 24, that was great. But it's just like it's just like jumping out of the car and running to try to like, you know, <laughs> catch up. <laughs> catch up. You're like if I run fast enough, I won't fall. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we awesome. had a nice break, but I can tell you like just from my team taking some time off and myself, um, the customers and Zscaler invest, people who are invested in Zscaler just kept going. So there was lots of people taking their certification test over their holiday time. Lots of people trying to do some virtual trainings and things like that. So um, it never really stops. And we came back to, to your point, just kind of hitting the ground running again. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And I know that you came back, Katie, and you probably had a bunch of people asking about the promotions because we talked about it on our last podcast. Um, yep. And so what, how, how's that going right now on the, on the promotion front? So we've had a wildly successful response. And because the ZDTA does require you to take that, that course and the labs associated to it, people kind of scrambled like, oh my gosh, I need to get this learning. I need to take the labs. I need to get prepared. And we highly recommend you do that. I mean, it is required, but you know, we want you to be engaged and getting prepared because that is how you're going to be successful on the exam. So we had a lot of demand driven up to get into the course in the labs. And so with that, we kind of came into the new year, had some discussion here at Zscaler about what we needed to do for customers to accommodate them. So from mm -hmm. my side of things, and I'll let Comedy speak to hers, but from my side of things for certification, we have extended the ZDTA um, exam fee being waived, so zero dollars. So people can keep their New Year's resolutions to like up their skills and get their cert and all of that. Um, so the test will actually run at zero dollars through February 29th. It is a leap year. Um, and so, so people have a little bit more time to take care of getting that coursework, those labs, and then going on and getting certified. So, it's so leap into the ZDTA certification. Okay, that yes. was really bad. That was so bad. <laughs> Great job, Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'll add to that, you know, um, I came in a few months earlier and we actually got the roadmap going for our academy in a new way. We aligned it to the new product suite and we um, added more courses and learning paths. And the one thing we wanted to make sure that all our customers are doing is getting enabled on the basic. And that was the genesis of this promo. So not only was the e-learning free as always, um, but we also gave away during the holidays the labs these are full eight hour sessions um virtual sessions worth twelve hundred dollars that we just said you know it's important for our customers to be enabled on this um, and that leads them to the zdta so we went hand in hand with the certifications um, uh, to provide all the enablement and training beforehand certifications are are huge right i know i get a, i get some questions on the community about Hey, because I remember, I, I I remember when I first came to Zscaler, there was a certification called the ZIA Administrator. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And we still have some some organizations and some students from that time that are asking, Hey, how do I become ZIA Administrator certified? And I know mm -hmm. that we've recently changed our certifications to where we're right. trying to. We're, we're bringing in more of an industry standard, right, to to our academy. But right. I do know that a lot of those principles that were covered and that were certified in the ZA administrator were, were transitioned into other areas. So maybe right. you can touch on a little bit about that strategy and, and where someone might start, because the ZIA administrator is kind of like their starting point. Right. So where would be a good starting point for them to begin? 
Yeah, I, I'll talk about the training and the lab and the general path for ev that we recommend for every customer, every new customer or a new individual who wants to start training. And then um, Katie, if you don't mind adding after that, uh, how the certifications align to it, right? So for a new customer, what we recommend is to start with the Z4U users essentials course or learning path that includes the e-learning the eight-hour lab that i was telling you about and it culminates in the zdta certification that katie will talk about a little bit more now the difference between the zia admin and the zia pro courses and the new z for uh, zscaler for users essentials learning path is that in the Zscaler for Users Essentials Learning Path, we are taking a more platform approach. You understand zero trust connectivity and the zero trust exchange from a platform perspective. And within that platform, you can use different configurations, different features such as CIA, ZPA, ZDX, etc. And so we start with a platform perspective and then dive into these different um, areas of that platform. So ZIA, um, if you have completed ZIA admin, or if you are thinking of doing that, the Zscaler for Users Essential Scores, or Z4UE, as we like to call it internally, um, is the right place to start. Um, and this also provides the foundation to go ahead and do any of the other specializations we have. So this is kind of like the foundational course. And then beyond that, you can you know, specialize in data protection or cyber threat protection or workloads. So depending on which area of um, cloud security you're functioning in, you can do different specializations. So this also starts, this is also the starting point for other specialization courses. Yep. And to, to Kamini's point, it does, you know, once you've gone through that course and you've gone through the labs, your then runway is clear to come take the ZDTA exam. And the way that we build our examination for ZDTA and then moving forward with any future certifications we have is we work with our subject matter experts and we also look that course content and those labs are also a piece of what we're looking at. We're looking at that and what's happening in the field, how people are actually you know, is what we're teaching matching what's happening in the field. Um, and we're having discussions with our subject matter experts about how to craft the exam for ZDTA. So what do people actually need to be assessed on? And what are the most important things they need to be assessed on? And that's kind of how we come to weighting our blueprint and all of that and how we create that exam. So mm -hmm. it's really um, an extensive process. And that is really something that Z, the Zscaler is starting to move up, I guess you would say, in doing. So any future certifications will be built that same way. And it's really important that we tie into that. I mean, just basic educational foundation is always um, teaching and then assessing. It's not, sometimes I think people are fooled. They think, oh, assessment comes first and then the teaching, like we'll teach to the test. But it's actually not that way. It's we teach the concepts and then we assess the most important things to certify someone and say that they are capable and, and understanding and know how to do all of these things. So that's just... Um, you know, kind of the principles we're operating on. And last year was a big year for Zscaler. We've never had a proctored exam. To your point, Ben, the, the old exams, ZIA, things like that, they were stood up in our LMS system. Um, it was just go through the course, take the exam. So we are working through with our customers, you know, this new frontier as far as for Zscaler, you come in, you go through the learning path, you sign up for the exam, that exam's hosted by our partner Certiverse. And you go over there, you, you, sign up, you take your test, and it is AI proctored. So in the beginning, they're going to check your ID. They're going to make sure you're adhering to the rules of a proctored exam. Um, so that experience is familiar, I think, to a lot of our customers in some ways, if they've earned certifications in the field um, with other groups, and usually they have. Uh, so that, that part is something new that we're bringing into it and kind of working that out and getting customers and everyone more comfortable with what that process is and what it feels like here at Zscaler. So from a proctored perspective, or even just the traditional learning perspective, right? And I might be foreshadowing however many months right now, but I know that at Zenith Live, 
we do certification courses. Am mm-hmm. I correct? And I know we have like a two day or a three day event that's before Zenith Live to get people in there and certified. And is that is it proctored? Do they do the proctored exam? How do they do that? And what's the opportunity for people who want to do something that's a little bit more traditional and in person? Yeah, so we are already starting the, the planning and getting deep into it actually already uh, for Zenith Live and Comedy can speak to what kind of training is going to be offered on site there. But we're trying to set up what I call a pop up testing center so that when you come to Zenith Live and you've done your training and you're ready to just go ahead and get that cert while it's fresh on your mind and you're coming right out of that learning, um, we will have that available for you to do that. And then you walk away with your certification. It's oftentimes just really making it easy for our customers and people who want to get certified. Um, It also brings a compelling value add if you are trying to get your organization to sponsor you to go to Zenith Live, that you can do that training and get that certification. So you're actually walking away with something that's valuable to your organization. Um, So we are in the middle of getting all of that planned. I think in the coming months, you will see some marketing videos and things coming out on that front. Yeah. And to add to that, um, you know, not only can if you've already completed the e-learning in the labs, you can come to this event and get certified. But if you haven't, you also have the option of getting trained during the event and taking the certification during the event. So you can do all of it during the event. Um, In addition, uh, you know, the keynote speech and the product sessions and other sessions will probably feature some new features and, you know, um, products and add-ons and stuff. The benefit of getting trained at Zenith Live is you don't not only get to see the new stuff, but you also get to train, get to train on it. And I think that is, again, as Katie was mentioning, a huge value add for someone who's coming to a conference it's not just understanding what kind of products we have, but also learning how to use those products. So um, getting trained on the basics, which is the Zscaler for users essentials, taking the the certification exam for it, which is ZDTA, and then jumping into some of the specializations. Um, As I mentioned, it could be something like business analytics or data protection, um, et cetera. So I think, To your point, Ben, uh, the event provides a fantastic opportunity for someone who wants to get trained in the traditional way. Um, In this day and age, almost everything is online, but uh, these kind of events allow people to come in, sit in a classroom setting, ask questions, learn from their, uh, you know, um, cohort that's sitting around them. Um, I think it is just goes back to the old way of learning. And for some people, that works really well. I'd have to say I'm in that camp. Yeah, I I like to sit in a classroom, take notes. And then at break, I can ask questions or follow up questions and get, you know, other experience. I'm in that camp. So, yeah. um, Yeah. And a lot of people are. Yeah, a lot of people are. In today's world, it's really hard to protect your time and your focus, right? Mm-hmm. When you're trying to take an e an e course or do something online, so there is still really value found in going into a classroom. Yeah, and I think it is uh, it is one of those luxuries that we are losing nowadays, right? The luxury of being able to devote your full attention in a classroom with your peers on one topic, right? Um, yeah, and so. Yeah, I mean, you'd get a lot from this um, because it's going to be cost effective to anyone who comes for the conference and is able to get trained and is able to get certified. Yeah, and from the testing center perspective, I mean, they'll experience what it's like if they were to go to a testing center. Again, a lot of these people have earned certifications in other areas um, prior to coming to Zscaler. And so, but they're going to get that same experience. They're going to come through the testing center. We're going to check IDs. We're going to put personal belongings away. It's going to be proctored by my trained team of proctors. Um, so that part of it is going to feel somewhat familiar, I think, to some of them. And, and it'll help them like get their certification, get out the door. And we promise not to let you leave empty handed. We'll probably have um, some sort of swag to give you. So and recognition. Yeah. You mean yeah. I can't use my Google on my phone? 
I'm not, I'm not passing that test. <laughs> yeah, we're not mobile yeah. device qualified yet. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Katie, uh, Comedy, thank you so much for, for coming back on the podcast. And, you know, there are going to be some familiar faces. We're going to have them on every month if I can, because there's a lot of content there. And as we get that drum beat getting into Zenith Live, there's going to be a lot of cool new things happening. And as we launch new certifications and new courses, we want to make sure we talk about that. And so uh, be, feel free. There is a section on the community, the Zscaler Academy section. Um, there's there's subcategories. Um, let's dive into the conversation. Let's talk more about the certifications, talk more about how you can learn about Zscaler products and services, and then also share your knowledge with the rest of the community. So again, thank you so much, Katie and Comedy, and uh, we'll see it. We'll see you next time. Okay, huge thanks to our incredible guests for sharing their insights. It's been a fascinating discussion that we've learned so much about Zscaler's business analytics portfolio certification courses and you know a lot more from the zscaler academy team so make sure to check out the zscaler academy section in the community for more information until next time keep learning and stay secure and we'll see you on the community